This podcast is sponsored by Podbean. Podbean is the easiest way to create your own podcast. We use Podbean to host Plot Twisters. Download the free Podbean podcast app to start, record and publish your very own podcast in minutes. Podbean provides everything you need to run your podcast and you can record and publish episodes directly from the app on your phone. Download the free Podbean app today. That's P-O-D-B-E-A-N. Head on over to Podbean at www.podbean.com and use the code PODCAST21 for your first 30 days of podcast hosting for free. Check it out. Hello and welcome to Plot Twisters. This is a podcast where we take movies and twist the plot to see if we can make them better. And if not, more adorable. At the moment, we're talking about teen movies from the 80s. On this episode, Gremlins from 1984. I'm Emma and now I have another reason to hate Christmas. (laughs) I'm Anders and I'm watching Snow White. I really love it. Do you love it? You love Snow White? Have you seen it? I am sending by a wishing well, make a wish into the well. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Do I love it? I don't mm-hmm. love it. You know, of all the places Snow White could have escaped to after she realized that that lady that she was living to- with wasn't that good. Was she her stepmom or something? I don't remember. Don't break into these people's houses, these miners. It's a miners yeah. barracks. Don't just break in and be like, I live here now. I did the dishes. Get out of here, Snow White. And I also brought a bunch of rodents in to this, into your into your space. Um, also, like my stepmother was it is mm-hmm. evil and awful, and um, so I, I'm just going to go and run into the very scary red woods. Well, you know? if, if given the choice between scary stepmom who's definitely going to murder you because I guess because you're more pretty than she is, come yeah. on, right? Or scary woods? Uh, go okay, scary woods. Like, can I just say though? Is she? Because, like, the stepmother's kind of badass. Like, with her, she's got a good Thank look. Thank you. Got a cool Finally, somebody's saying it. She's, she's got strong eyebrows. She's a looker. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, and this, these eyes have got the hearts for the stepmom from Snow White. Absolutely. <laughs> also, do you want to do something fun? This is completely unrelated to the movie Gremlins, which we're here to talk about. We'll talk about that movie in a second. Yes, I want to know something fun. What do you got? Loads of Disney villains are in the same color palette of um, black, uh, dark purple, and green. Oh, really? Like, yeah, or like like dark, mainly dark purple. If you think about like. The one from Snow White. Yeah. Um, Ursula's purple. Us, yeah, Ursula. The one from uh, Dr. Facilier from Princess and the Frog. Oh. Um, there's the Queen in Alice in Wonderland, I think, as well. It's the same kind of purple. Right. I wonder what that means. Are they... It, that feels very... That's like a Wes Anderson thing. I wonder if that's where he got that from. Co- yeah. Fresh color palettes and the making is it to make you are we supposed to hate purple is that what it is is purple supposed to make like a you know that guy who rings a bell and the dogs are all like where's my food you Pavlov know? yeah is it the same tell thing tell me tell me all of the purple Disney princesses here's what you got you ready for this um see no wait wait what, what? I don't know. what about you know that one with a Dang. Yeah. Dang. Dang, like, arguably, you stopped me in my tracks. Um arguably Rapunzel from Tangled is purple, but she's kind of like it's like a it's like a very light pink. pink it's basically pink. It's basically pink. That's wow. just a thing. I'll tell you my favourite bit of Snow White. Okay. Um when they go into the mine, all of the, the sparkly gems. It's I, very good. I used to love that bit so much. I just watch it over and over again because I love the sparkly <laughs> gems so much. <laughs> Would you like to know a fact about me? Because you know, this is the season. Of, this is the season of sharing and caring. Yeah. Um. Um. When I was in the eighth grade, um. Not only does my eighth grade always throw the famous eighth grade cabaret at the beginning of the year. Of course. Uh, that's where that where that that kid I know did that whole thing from the Princess Bride, and it was really great. Did you do the whole of Snow White? <laughs> no. Every fall, 
the eighth grade does the eighth grade play. And that <gasps> year we did Snow White and the friggin' Seven Dwarves. No way. Which one were you? I was Dope, one dopey. of the dwarves. But we didn't use the Disney names because we didn't have uh. the rights to the Disney names. So I was Wick the Dwarf. <laughs> And I mm. think I had, and I'm, and I'm going to be generous here, three lines. And I'm pretty sure one nice. of them was, oh, no. And the other one was, I'll get my pickaxe. And the final one was something like, don't leave Snow White. Mm. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm not saying people threw roses at the stage and told me that I should have a Tony or whatever. But I definitely l- fully lived the part of one of the many how many were they? Several dwarves that Snow White was pals with. Hey, so um, hey, so Merry Christmas, by the way. Yes, and to you. On on a scale of one to ten, how yeah. f- how um jolly are you feeling? Um, I think like a nine. <laughs> nine is good. Yes, I've been I've been baking Christmas cookies today. Fantastic. Um, so that's like a, a good couple of points. <laughs> um, I have a Santa hat right on on right now. Wait. They can't see you. You could have just said... <laughs> I know. I have a Santa hat on. It's not going to stay up. You've just pulled a Santa's hat out of nowhere and produced it and put it on your head. And what I love is your commitment, right? And like yeah. Gold Star. Um, Thank you. Gold Star because this is an auditory medium. You know, I'm wearing a king's crown right now and it's wobbling <laughs> back and forth on top of my rotund skull. And oop, it's bejeweled. Oh, one of the emeralds fell off. I guess that's fine because I'm a billionaire. Nobody knows because this is a podcast. Yeah, that's true. But you know. I know that I am a crownless, you can see me. a crownless. I know that fool. you're not wearing a crown, and you know that I am wearing a Santa hat because you can see me and I can see you. So the truth, the, I'm a method actor, right. and the truth of my performance <laughs> lies in reality, in the reality of the world. Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. like, okay, let's try this, audience. Sure. I'm going to say two things. One uh-huh. of the things I'll be wearing a Santa hat, and the other one, <laughs> other one I won't. Okay. <laughs> Okay, fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I want you exactly. to see if you can tell the difference you tell based the difference. on the truth okay, of my form. Wait, okay. I'm closing my eyes. Am, am okay. I, is it for me or is this for the audience? It's for everyone. It's for everyone. Everyone yeah. includes me. I learned that early on. <laughs> but I already okay. know. It's not for me. Okay, you say the thing and we're going to, you text us which one was the one was you were wearing. Which one is. The... <laughs> and I'll take a screenshot right. of you with the hat and without the hat. And then we can yeah. use that on our Instagram and people can phone in and they can do that thing where it's like text in, but it's going to cost you eight pounds, but it's fine because you <laughs> participating is how you feel validity of your own life and connection yeah. to things that are greater yeah. than you. Yes. Yeah. That's why, that's why people watch Strictly Come Dancing and also that yes. other one where people sing, right? Yeah. We all want to feel be involved. All right. We do. You go for your sentences. Which one is, okay. which one is the hat one? All right. Is it so? The two sentences coming up. Sentence A. I'm very excited about Christmas. Clearly. Sentence sentence B. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited about Christmas. Oh 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 oh. Now, which one was I wearing the hat for? Well, you know when the thing, the thing is. <laughs> um, what? Uh, it's, a subtle, it's a subtle difference. I just, uh, I'm a very, I'm a very, you know, minute actor. Um, <laughs> I feel like your volume on the second one was like a little bit, like a notch, yeah, like a little something, extra. like a little, right? Mm. Although the first sentence felt more authentic, so <laughs> you know, time will, yeah, tell. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is our Christmas episode and if you've been listening to us for at least another season, this is season what? two, so there was one more, which was season one. Well you'll know from <laughs> that that um our Christmas episodes get a bit rowdy. Yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> what, are you about? what what was wrong? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> Something very magical is happening. Um I don't know if you I don't know if you know about this. <laughs> what? Um 
So I'm watching I'm watching you on FaceTime on the screen and two magical very magical Christmas fairies just flew down and started placing actual Christmas baubles all over your microphone. Oh and now there's a little Christmas tree. Uh-huh. I'm making it Christmassy. <laughs> I'm making it Christmassy. <laughs> I'm, I'm decking my own damn halls, okay? Oh, I'm taking a picture and posting it on everywhere. If we ha- okay. if we were to so, you know, we've established a few things on this podcast over the last couple of years. The first is you're not special. You're just some guy, okay? And that's canon. And that's yes. important for everyone to know. You're not special. You're just a person. The second rule is you yeah. are special. And you very are unique. Special. And you're very, very good. The third the third um, precedence is mm-hmm. this is a safe space, right? Just, yeah. You know, relax and unwind. The fourth is of course we don't yuck other people's yums we don't right no. right the fifth emma you know is um we are, are good people yeah you are good people <laughs> you know it i know it yeah i know it you yeah. are good people you are good people but all of the these are all great precedences and also rules to live by. And quite frankly, I mean, one day and, you know, we'll be long gone. Rest in peace. But one day, maybe the foundation of a religion. It could happen. Right. People listen and they go, yeah, those people really spoke to me. And then they start a religion. It's not like we're gods or whatever. They, they, they would just look to us as like, I feel that we might be prophets. I'm getting ahead of ourselves. But those are some good rules and some good ideas. But we've never set any uh, Christmas precedences. And I wondered if maybe we could set some Christmas um, traditions in the tradition of the Plot Twisters pod ethos. Cool. Okay. Right? Right? Yeah. Right? Right. I like that. All right. Good. I have an idea. Okay. What about this? We say we can say one thing that we like about each other <laughs> and one thing we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> that holiday no. that holiday tradition sounds like my nightmare hello everybody let's all gather around that and i'm gonna say one thing i like about you it's called the christmas sandwich yeah and the first thing i'm gonna two say is truth I and I like. two truths and a lie and um it, th- you know that thing when people are like i'm gonna sandwich it with su- some good stuff so they're like mm. tell them two nice things and one and the thing you really want to say it's like hi i just wanted to let you know like your hair looks great and um, you're not meeting your performance goals and you are <laughs> heading to a disciplinary hearing. And also yeah. like, uh, love that, love that way that you said um, hello this morning. Yes. Nice. Your vibes today, amazing. Fat. Your shoes, ugly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your eyebrows, on point. <laughs> exactly exactly and that's how you make people feel better not on our podcast what are you suggesting we each tell each no, other a thing was, that we like no, each other and a thing no, we hate about no. each other good god but i look that was a joke i know that both of those things would make you feel absolutely awful <laughs> and also there's nothing i dislike about you do you know why because it's christmas that's nice no yeah. hate on christmas no hate on christmas that's how about this how about this no we like to have fun and right. make you know um occasional humorous derogatory comments <laughs> what about that no um no bummers no no no, bummers. Uh, no downers no meanies no meanies how about this uh we both like films and we also hate some films mm. but at christmas we like every film we like all of the movies <laughs> Every single one of them. And around Christmas, when people say, hey, have you seen this movie? We go, yep, loved it. Yep, loved it. Totally loved it. Totally. And they go, oh, cool. Totally what was it. your favorite bit of The Silence of the Lambs? And I say, all of it. All of it. All of it. Yeah, all of it. You ever seen Silent Night, Deadly Night? <laughs> yep, loved it. <laughs> yep, loved, loved it. it. Great Seen film. the sequel, rated 3.2 on IMDb. Loved it. Which is uh, 30% recycled <laughs> footage from the first movie. I loved it. It was traumatic, and that made me think. And when I think, I feel good. I feel so good. I loved it. So I totally and loved every it. Every experience is a learning experience. Yep, yep. Um, you know, also that thing about Christmas where it's like, don't tell kids that Santa. Spoiler alert: If there's any kids in listening to this podcast, okay, I'll stop listening. Tell them to thank you. Good, 
good bit of banter. Tell your kids if you're in the car or like around children right now that you're supervising or you're, you know, like in charge of because they're yours or more like, you know, you're the legal guardian of. Tell them to like put their little fingers in their ears and sing a silent night. OK. Mm-hmm. OK. Now that they're all away. You know that thing where it's like, you know, Santa's not real. Right. We know Santa's not real. But like, but like we have to pretend, you know, for mm-hmm. like the sake of the the union and the world or whatever. Sure. How about this rule for plot twisters? We all believe in Santa Claus. Yeah. Now, kids, you can listen back in again. Parents and adults, you close your ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As every parent. And, <laughs> and you all need to sing like, you know, um, uh, what's that Katy Perry song that goes like, baby, you're a firework, yeah. right? Parents yeah. of the world, stick your fingers in your ears and sing Everybody, Katy Perry's all firework. Adults, anyone over the age of... <laughs> 15 stop listening immediately uh, uh, uh. all right kids kids your parents don't know what they're heckin talking about all right santa's real i'm an adult he's real i know he's real yeah i've seen him personally. i met him one time one yeah. time for a second i thought i met him but i was really tired but we talked i think anyone who says that he's not real is um just trying to be cool so yeah, yeah. adults you can come back Make them go, uh, uh, uh. And I think the final rule of Plot Twister's Christmas. Mm. Um, plot it, Chris. Plot Christmas. Twist, Christmas. Twist, twist, Christmas. Plot twist, Twistmas. 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 That's fun. Twistmas, right? Is that, um, and, and, and to honor Plot Twistmas, mm-hmm. every Christmas morning, we all need to wake up. Right? We walk down yeah. the stairs, right? Yeah. And and I really want to encourage you all to do this. And you're gonna think, don't. Is this like when we told people to go and stand outside the houses and whisper fart to themselves, <laughs> just really quietly? Fart. No, this has more dire impact, but also it's really important. Okay, so just oh, geez, trust me. I want you all on Christmas morning to walk down the stairs and before anyone else wakes up, I want you to take all the tags off of the Christmas presents and just <gasps> just twist them up. Just, put, just mix them up. <laughs> and then in, then when everybody uh, opens the Christmas uh, presents and everyone's like, oh, uh, Grandma, you shouldn't have. Thanks for the... Uh, chainsaw Game grease Boy. and like in your in your uncle's like oh I really wanted to, some children's aged two to four oh puzzles. Here's the thing, okay? You stick with it, and do you know why? Why? Because Christmas is about being together with your family. It's not about this junk you say in the store. You, you do it, and then you and then you they everyone's really sad, and everyone's cr- like your little sister is crying, and uh-huh. your mom looks really heartbroken, and so you're heartbroken. just like you stand up in the middle of all this debris of wrapping paper, <laughs> yeah, and you get out a megaphone that was meant for your <laughs> uncle, and you just say, "This is the real meaning of Christmas." The 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 real real meaning of Christmas. <laughs> and then you go. I sorry, poverty's mm, nerf. You curl into a ball and you begin to weep, but like it's for show, and then everyone will feel so bad that they'll that they won't care that they got the wrong present. As someone who spends a very long time carefully selecting presents for people and then wrapping them up and takes a lot of care <laughs> and pleasure out of it, um, <laughs> that rule and practice is garbage. Okay. All but right, what I do fair. think we should do is we should say, was this number three? That was at least number seven, if I recall. Whichever, whatever number yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, many, many rules. I think we should just have Pobody's Nerfect as the rule. And I think we should just say that to everyone. Pobody's Nerfect. Anytime somebody does something bad or annoying or inconsiderate yeah. or rude, like if you go home and your family are no good to you, which is common. It'll happen, trust me. Pobody's Nerfect. You nerfect. say it to them. You say it about yourself. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, mom. I'm sorry that I didn't get you a Christmas present. And I got home at midnight on Christmas drunk. And I knocked over the post, the mailbox. And then I stepped on the cat. Nobody's mm. nerfect. Nobody's nerfect. Right? Yeah. And your mom goes, I'm sorry that I didn't send you uh, your inheritance and you dropped out of college. 
uh, and that you now are a drifter. Yeah. Poverty's nerfed. That's yeah. not me, by the way. That's just a character I invented called Drifter Dave. He's having a tough time. Drifter Dave, nice to meet you. What do you want for Christmas, Drifter Dave? <laughs> I want you, some. Can't, you do you do understand that you can't introduce any kind of character without me immediately wanting to interview them on the podcast. Right? I want you know what you want me? You wanna know what I want? Yes. This guy want... sounds a bit like the prospector, but no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> do you know hang on. That was hang on. Dave, hi, do you know what I want? You wanna know what I want? What do you want? I want respect and I want a sleeping bag. In that okay. order, that's fine. We can probably get we can fit that in the budget in the plot twister's budget. And I want to be a tambourine star. Mm, no, maybe Easter. Um, you, you, I want me. I have dreams. I have ambitions. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. I respect your dreams. Don't yuck other people's yams. Um. So this is a our Christmas present to you, listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, is our Christmas joy and good vibes, yeah, and a space to switch off from the world, switch which off. is not good right now. Hey, also, you're right, and also, if you're not wearing sweatpants right now, put them on. Put them on. Put them on. Put them on. I don't care if you're at work. Put them on. Get us. Get a snack. Get yes. a snack. And it doesn't even have to be a healthy one. No, get a bad snack. It should be bad. chocolate with also other chocolate mixed in. Just think about like what is the thing? If I was if I was six years old oh, and yes, yes. somebody came up to me. Yes. Somebody like that I know and respect and uh-huh. involved with my family, you know, not a stranger. Yeah. Comes up to me and says, You can have whatever snack you want right now. What would you choose? A bowl of cereal. Dude, what? <laughs> A bowl of cereal. Uh, I bet it was. It's got to be a good kind. What kind? It would be. Here's my thing. It's a cereal cocktail. It's when you get like five different cereals and you all mix cereal them in bar. One bowl. That's what we you call get, it when you mix them all together. Yeah. Yeah, you get like you get some um, some Wheatos. You get some um, some crunchy nut, some crunchy rice krispies, um, some cocoa pops. Ooh. And what else? Golden nuggets, all in one bowl. Mix nice. it all up. That's nice. that is the. Ooh, that's the dream. That's the dream. If you if you really want to push the boat out, I've done this before on my birthday. <gasps> Chocolate milk as well. Shut your dang mouth. Yes. That sounds incredible. So good. So do you know good. what do you know what I want? Just what a want? big old bowl of nerds. Oh, yeah. When I was six. Like a bowl that's big. You know a bowl, imagine a bowl that's big enough to fit over your head and then yeah. double it, right? So like Real you know, big. like a horse has like a sack of like whatever it is that horses like hay and they put yeah, it in their of mouth hay. Yeah. and if you hook it on their ears they, and they call that a feed it. bag that's it like one of those but with nerds I want a feed bag with all the nerds <laughs> and you know and you just <laughs> chomp on you know the thing when you're a kid and you're eating so much candy because somebody made a bad decision and let you eat a lot of candy and your teeth start to hurt and then your face <laughs> hurts but you keep eating candy and then you're so wired that you don't sleep uh-huh, for three days uh-huh, uh-huh. or when you go trick or treating and you have Two months worth of candy, but for some reason nobody supervises you and you eat all of it in one day yeah. and then you can see through time because you've eaten so much <laughs> candy that you're sick, but then you're through the sickness and then actually you can see the future. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, what that. I that's 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 what I want for you all. You know what people. I did when I became an adult, one of the first things I did. Mm-hmm. I say first, it was like maybe two weeks after I turned eighteen, right. I think. I went right. out to a Tesco and I bought an ent- I bought a massive cherry pie and i took it home and i ate the whole thing that's awesome because i was like i'm an adult i can do whatever i want and so i went and bought a massive cherry pie and ate the entire thing in one sitting you remember that feeling when you realized that like all the barriers that have been put in front of you in life are actually garbage and you're literally allowed to do pretty much whatever you want that's legal and you could just go to the store and then i realized we're just talking specifically about buying junk food and then eating it but Mm -hmm. like I remember buying a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola and just sitting in my car and just drinking the whole dang thing. Yeah. Because I realized that like I can do whatever I want within yeah. within this within this episode of life that I've been granted. And so yeah. maybe one day I want to chug a two liter bottle of soda or go to or go to McDonald's three times in one day because, you know, because I don't give a hooey. Right. Mm. And, and eventually I'll grow up. 
air quotes, and get a job and think about my pension. For now, I'm just going to eat sugar and think about it now. You know why? Because I'm alive. Gosh darn because, it. Because here also, here's a uh-huh. serious point. I mean, it's well, it's like it's like 20% serious. But, um, when those res- when those barriers come down and you are just like out in the world, yeah. a lot of the things about that are quite scary and quite tough and and difficult. You know, being an adult is is hard. It's the worst. So you have to counterbalance that. I believe in a previous episode you referred to it as live sandwich. <laughs> um, you have to I counterbalance. Recall. Maybe yes. no. This isn't this is, live sandwich is about the crushing dread meeting the inertia or something like that and it's all terrible but but yeah, you've got to yeah. balance the tough things in life yeah with the, the the benefits that you get from it so yes you have to do taxes now that's inevitable also go and buy yourself a birthday cake any day of the year tax refund right yes <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly yes i have to go to work but sometimes i can just close my eyes when i'm at work and pretend that i'm not at yeah, For and like I get second. money now. And I have money now. And then people mm. go, you don't have any money. And you're like, oh, yeah? I have Let three me give money. you. I have four or five. Look at my, here's my bank number. Mm. And also my sort code. Don't write it down, though. <laughs> oh, I see you're writing it down. It's my credit card number. But no, I'm not going to give you the secret numbers. I'm not going to tell you my bank account details, which are. The yeah, 425701. Sort code four five six two eight one. Secret number zero six nine. Write it down, ding dong. Those are just made up numbers. Yeah. That I read off of my debit mm. card. I have a sinking suspicion, Emma, that at some point you and I should probably talk about the movie <sighs> that we watched this week, which is of course the nineteen eighty four classic Gremlins. Do we have to, and should we? We can. We can do a. We can do a, a bit of it. I think we should. I think we should. should. We? All right, we should. It's a tradition. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why. Uh-huh. I like. I liked this movie. So did I. Good. Would you like me to give you the fastest rundown of any movie ever? Yes. Some dude buys a little furry thing, and the guy's like, "Here's a bunch of rules." Mm. Uh, sure, I'll listen to those rules. Nope, didn't listen to the rules. Bad stuff happens. Monsters happen. But then everything's fine at the end. Gremlins. Here's the thing. I've never Mm. seen Gremlins before I watched it for this podcast. And it was Mm -hmm. adorable. And it was weird. And it was kind of slapsticky. And it felt like a labyrinth a lot to me. And I just like, I thought it was a hoot. And I really enjoyed the Christmas of it all, you know? And the silliness. And um, I also, I thought it was great. But I also have some things that I thought could make it a whole lot better. And I, I, I now understand why people always talk with such fondness about the movie Gremlins. But mm. You've seen this movie before, am I right? Mm-hmm. When did you first see it? Were you a little one or a medium man or a full size man? A medium man. Um, teenager, I think. Right. Um, I did find it quite scary, actually, when I first watched For it. For real? Uh, not yeah. like yeah, I get it. Do you, do you have you ever seen Beetlejuice? Yeah, that's scary. That I remember finding that like fascinatingly scary. Oh my gosh, I love Beetlejuice so much. This was a similar thing in the sense that I was like, oh, this is interesting. Ooh, okay, I loved the little cutie ones a lot. The ma- um, the Mogwai. Yes, and um, are you are you familiar with Furbies at all? Yeah, for sure. Good because because that's um, what they are, right? That's what they are. Because <laughs> that's what they are. <laughs> These are Furbies. Um, I had a Furby, and I think mm. I definitely remember the first time I saw one. I was like, "Oh my god, it's a Furby!" Um, they're big again. Did you know that they're really popular again? I think. Hey, you know, to quote the bare naked ladies, everything old is new again. Yes. Everything under the sun. Or more cynically, stuff that was cool at one point, then wasn't cool for a while, becomes cool again because life mm. is cyclical. People have short attention spans and memories and nothing lasts forever. Yes. And um, kids now think I'm cool because I know so much about Pokemon. And that's really good. Um, Gonna catch them all. <laughs> the, 
the, the, mm-hmm. the uh, just another movie reference i feel like i've probably told you to watch this before so i'll be very disappointed if you haven't seen it oh, because no. you have to watch everything i recommend to you otherwise we won't be friends anymore get ready um, to be disappointed it, the mitchells versus the machines oh we haven't watched that yet but it is on my watch <sighs> list it's on my watch sake. list hey i've been re-watching <laughs> lost for the last couple of months okay and it's taking me a very long time and it's very good <laughs> Spoiler alert, they're back on the island, and I'm pretty sure that they're all dead. But I don't oh. know because i got four more episodes to watch. Then I'll watch that then movie. You watch, then you should watch Then this. I'll watch The Godfather, and then my whole watch list will be up to date. There's a very funny bit in that film with Furbies, which made me absolutely screech with laughter. Um, mm. I That film is absolutely brilliant. It's one of the best kids' films I've seen in a very long time. So, Dang. Um, yes, very, very strong recommend. All right. So there are Furbies. Another, I also want to make a super, super niche reference that you're absolutely not going to get, but maybe, maybe one person who listens to this might, or maybe one I or two. Love um, <laughs> in the kind of, I think, mid 2000s, there was a video game which was oh it was on God. Xbox. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, and it's called Overlord, and there was Overlord 1 and Overlord 2. And it's a, such a good game. You play as an overlord and you control these minions. So the way that you play the game is just by directing Banana. these little minions to do things for you. Well, it's, this is the thing. This is where I, I know minions because of this game. And then when the whole yellow minions became a thing, I was like, oh, not the original ones. Mm-hmm. But they do look <laughs> incredibly like gremlins, which made right. me think of them as well. Right. So um, that's another super niche reference. But yeah anyway i think this film is great i think it's very simple and i love a simple film but it works really well right i think you're you're right in that it has that very lovely kind of christmasy glow to it that some films manage to achieve and others don't yeah a lot of the newer christmas films that are being released like there's just so many of them at the moment they just don't have it somehow where some of the old ones do so like you when you watch something like home alone it's got yeah. that yeah. fuzzy yeah. christmasy yeah. loveliness yeah. to it well this is um, th- 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 this is what i'm saying sorry this is an aside and y'all i'm gonna put my neck out on the line here and buck a lot of trends specifically mm-hmm. about christmas movies <clears throat> You should yeah. go and watch Home Sweet Home Alone. <laughs> it's very okay. good. Is it? Despite all the reviews. Okay. And let me tell you why. It made me feel nostalgic and Christmassy, and that's what we're talking about. Oh, that's good. Home Alone is the same. And mm. a movie that I've never seen before, Gremlins, mm. is the same. My up-to-date reference, um, well, up-to-date recommendation is Robin Robin by Ardman, not, which it's is just on Netflix. It's so good. Which is so good. I'm not a mouse, oh, I'm a it's bird. it's amazing. It's so it's amazing. good. You know the magpie things. that says things? Yeah. Things. <laughs> Ooh, in my household, we say that like three or four times a day at the things. moment. Anytime it's something comes right. to the door, I'm like, things. <laughs> Can I tell you what made me pumped up and made, made makes me feel pumped up whenever I see it in films? We yeah. have talked about it before. Who cares? It's Christmas. Say it again. Um, like fun home inventions. Oh my goodness also gracious! Known as That's Rube the best. Magazines. <laughs> That's the best part of this dang movie. This yeah. dad has like he is a non-stop invention machine. He's better. He's better than Thomas Edison, mm-hmm. right? He's better than a Tesla guy, right? <laughs> He's better. Name four more inventors. He's better than um. <laughs> he's better than the guy. Facebook. <laughs> he invented stuff, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not this. It's not the same though, is it? Inventing Facebook versus inventing a machine that like serves you toast, you know? Uh, the guy who invented the cotton gin. Mm. Uh, um, a Carter, um. He's really into peanuts. Mm-hmm. George Washington Carver. Cool. That's a different. George Washington Carver is like I love peanuts. That guy. Nice. But, but what was your favorite invention in this movie? Well, if it had worked, the egg cracking thing was great. Right. If it worked, <laughs> <laughs> I also thought that the what was it the portable bathroom? The bathroom buddy. 
Yeah, I think that's a buddies. really <laughs> good <laughs> idea. I think that's a good idea. I would get one if it was like if it was functioning and good and nicely designed. Here's the thing: the bathroom buddy, the way the dad pitches, like, "Hey, you know when you have to carry all this luggage? Now you don't have to because I've invented this thing that's basically a toothbrush and a razor and a and a and, a, and, a, and some floss." But together, yeah. dude, you still need a suitcase. It's called clothes. But I hear what you're saying, it's, Mr. You Inventor. haven't changed the volume of these items in any way. If anything, you've added to it. All that you've done, the way you should pitch, the way you should pitch that product <laughs> is you should say, <laughs> are you tired of having to remember to bring all of these items? Now you only have to remember exactly, one item. Exactly, the bathroom buddy. Put all of your eggs in this compact basket. You, you're on a, like he said, imagine you're on a train, you're on a yes. plane and you go, Oh no, I forgot to brush my teeth. I've got a bad case of dragon breath. Don't worry, because I have this bulky as hell <laughs> unit. Dangerous machine, which, which you would not be liquid. allowed to bring on a plane. <laughs> right? Because it's over 180 mil of liquid. Well, and it's, it's got, got a got razor a, on it. A razor on it. And also, imagine brushing your teeth with like a half toothbrush attached to like a big brick of mm. crap. <laughs> right that's not bathroom buddy that's bathroom nightmare but i do really like it i do really mm. like it it would make packing quicker yeah just uh, um honey i'm getting ready for my big trip to wisconsin don't forget your bathroom buddy thanks darling what would i do without you you'd be lost without me <laughs> i am lost with you goodbye <laughs> i'm leaving forever <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving you with my bathroom buddy <laughs> because they were unhappy but not anymore because they have their no. bathroom buddy and their smokeless ashtray <laughs> if you had to leave your wife one of the inventions in this film which one would it be easy don't even don't even don't even trip dog you know what I'd choose the multi fly swat swatter swatter thing which is mm. like effectively a drill with 17 fly swatters attached to it right <laughs> And I know what you're thinking. Keeps things interesting. To keep out, but there's so many reasons. <laughs> hey oh There's a lot of things you could use it for, and I'm not just talking flies, if you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Beetles and bugs, obviously. Yeah. And I just feel like the best offense is a good defense. And also, it's a real showpiece. It's either yeah. that or the sludge espresso machine. Because sometimes when I make liquid coffee, it's just not enough to wake my tired bones. So I'd like to scoop it with a spoon like uh, like this invention. Here's another question. If you were to make an invention, a Rube Goldberg machine, uh -huh. to speed up some process in your life, what would it be? Well, I've already, I think I may have already talked about this, but when I was in the sixth grade, I invented what I believe you call frubes. Oh, yeah. Right? I, uh, I have already invented that. This this particular piece of childhood trauma. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I, when I, the time when I was 12 and I scooped a bunch of yogurt into a Ziploc bag, and took it to school and said that I had a new invention. And everyone looked at me and said, you okay, hon? And I was like, I'm fine. I've got a baggie full of yogurt. Would that still be what you would want to do? Is that right now, you as you are, right me now in 2021, yeah, if yeah, you yeah, could yeah. make an invention, would it be that you could take a bag of yogurt with you? I mean, it's still good and I still do like <laughs> still yogurt. Good. I still, still good. I still do like yogurt. So no, convenient. All right. Here's that thing. Do you remember in the, in the speaking of Ardman Productions, do you remember in Waltz and Gromit's The Wrong Trousers? Mm -hmm. Where... Gromit is like at the end. He's trying to catch F Feathers McGraw. Is that mm -hmm. was his name? Feathers McGraw. Yes. And he's building train tracks as he's traveling. <gasps> do you rem do remember you, this? Do you right. mean the best scene <laughs> in cinema? <laughs> and he's just going, is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. penguin's flying. <laughs> right. Yeah. I feel like if there was an invention that would allow me to board a personal train carriage mm. and then have the speed and dexterity of a grommet in the wrong trousers to yes. place and remove, tracks, place in front yeah, yeah. and then remove behind bespoke train tracks that would allow me to travel a, quite quickly. Are you talking about a car? <laughs> nope. I'm not talking no, about a gonna car. No, it's going to be a train. I'm talking a train. about a self-propelling Track in front and then removed from the back uh, system 
that would mm. help me glide through places and time quickly and it would be my personal train thing mm. and my right hand would place and my left hand would remove and then it would switch and then my left hand would place and my right hand would remove. science it could work that's what It'll i want work. that's my you, you need work. some you need well, you know like a tank has like a rotating band as a wheel Oh, what about that? About but it's the train right, so there's like a circle, like a hamster wheel around You're you. You're inside a huge wheel of train tracks. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. But it's going, and you have to pedal. I think you, that's fantastic. You could even, be, you could even, rather than being inside it, you could be on, be out on it. Yeah, and on then, it. And then they it could would maybe rotate. be two for stability. Two maybe, rotating oh, maybe, maybe four. Maybe four for could, stability. Maybe four. Maybe four. four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a couple of wing mirrors. Four like, seats you know, in the back, to comfortable, leather to comfortable. seats, heated, a bonnet, a windshield. Yeah, some kind of space to put items yeah, that you've four purchased. four doors. Yeah, and a boot. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a Hyundai Odyssey. That's what we've uh, that's what we've made. Just uh, there, that just just right there, right? It's a Hyundai Elantra, right? And that's fine. No, I want to be like Grumman. I want to be placing the track. Yeah. Or. You know, one of those things that's like, remember in The Simpsons where Homer goes to hell and they're like, you have to eat donuts forever. And then Homer's like, I'm fine with that because I like donuts. Can I tell you a secret? Sure. When you say, do you remember when in The Simpsons? Uh -huh. Probably like seven out of ten times I remember <laughs> when in The Simpsons. Seven but out I do of ten. I do remember that one. I remember that one. Seven out of ten is pretty good, to be <laughs> fair. And what I should say to preface is, do you remember in seasons one through 11 of The Simpsons when this thing happened, right? And and the answer is, if you don't, that's fine. Because I, much, to, much like your video game reference where you knew one in a thousand would get it, I make Simpsons references assuming that most people won't. But those who do will look at me and give me a nod, a wink, mm. and a handshake, and we'll be bound for life. Yes. But in that episode of The Simpsons where he goes to hell and he's being fed all this donut and they're like, <laughs> you can't eat all these donuts. And he goes, I am I can because I'm Homer, you know? Yeah. It'd be nice to have some sort of like a Rube Goldberg sort of like a thing that feeds me sweets sometimes. That right? would be good. Not to a point where I'm Homer in hell, but definitely yeah. beyond a point where people be like, you can't eat that much chocolate. And I'd be like, wink. Yeah, I can. Mm. You know why? Because it's... <coughs> Christmas, right? And yeah. at Christmas, you can have as much Cadbury dang eggs as you want, even though they're for Easter, right? You can buy yes. them online. Trust me. You can buy them on Amazon anytime you want. But why would you, you monster? It's an Easter thing. Can I tell you my two <laughs> yes. things? Yes, I have two. Please. Yes, yes, yes. Number one, milk tap. Uh, d uh, um... It's in the kitchen uh, next to the water tap. Uh, and, you need, and you pull it milk. and there's milk. <laughs> Number one, milk tap. Number two, this is kind of weird, but I really don't weirder like... Than, sorry, weirder than milk tap? Milk tap isn't weird. Milk tap is insane. You'd have beer tap. Yeah, that's different. It's bottle condition. Why is it different? Because milk goes off super fast. It's a That's why if you get it from the tap, then it's always fresh. Where's the other end of the pipe? That's what I want to know. <laughs> In the cow. <laughs> <laughs> you monster. <laughs> I don't know. There'd be some there'd be a there'd be a system. It would be like a hydraulics thing, so it would only shoot <laughs> the exact amount of milk that you want. Take that cow. It. It's just a hydraulic system. Don't worry no, about I, it. I, I, don't I, you worry about it. I'm against animal cruelty. I, I'm vegetarian. I wouldn't want that so happening. So am I. So am I. It's a moot but point. if I could have a milk tap, I would. I, with the other one is, this one is a really weird one. Um, mm. I really don't like putting my shoes on. Blech. Yeah, what a drag. Right? Is that, just, do you, do you, like, I don't, I know, I've, ne I've never liked it. Right. Um, I'm very tall, you might have noticed. I know that about you. <laughs> you might be able to hear the height in my voice. Hey, do one where you say one where you're tall and say one where you're short and see. Okay, which I've one got is. I'm on a um I'm on a an, an office chair so I can shoot my chair up and down uh, so uh, I can actually uh -huh. make this happen. Okay. All right. This it, what, 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 <laughs> what should you say? How about say she sells seashells down by the seashore? Okay. Isn't it by the Okay. She sells seashells somewhere. By the way, you need to you need to you need to move your business, right? Supply and demand. 
also like you shouldn't be if you if it's a brick and mortar thing you shouldn't be building on sand is she does she have like a tray you know yeah, like, exactly what okay. happens when the storm comes is that and it will come right. it, it, Let it me is tell coming you. it's coming so is winter she sells seashells on the seashore <laughs> she sells seashells on the seashore which one had the tall energy and which one had the sh- oh <laughs> look, my I, goodness right in and tell us look i don't like putting my shoes on um i like <laughs> shoes i have lots of shoes but i'm very tall and my feet are very far away uh-huh. and i always have to stretch a lot and or like sit down and you know you have to like sit down and yeah no i get it oh you sit and down and pull them up right you like, need to buy slippers i know formal I slippers for outside wear but i like an exciting shoe well fashion is pain yeah fine but i get it you need to get some sort of machine that puts it on your feet and then you yes. don't have to bend down yep yep like in wallace and gromit where he just like falls through the floor and his trousers are put on oh i love that so much i just step outside of my front door and you know i have like a welcome mat right and it just splits apart momentarily <laughs> the shoes. and my and the shoes just shoot up Got out onto my ground. feet to come over the ground yep yeah yep yep Yep, 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 yep. I love it. And it could be done. And it should be done. And it will be done. But not today. And I'll tell you why. Why? Well, it is our... It's a thing that we do from time to time. We don't have to do it all the time. And we don't necessarily do it well every time. But we do have a thing that we do. (laughs) Particularly if this is the first episode you've listened to. We do normally do a thing. If you've never listened to our podcast before... First this of all, this is the wrong episode to listen to. <laughs> welcome. It's nice Hi. to see you. And might I just say, you're looking well. You are. You are looking well. And I hope that your family is well. Mm. But also, this one, you chose to listen to this one. That was a mistake. And that's on you, sister <laughs> yeah, or brother or human. Fault. That's not our fault. All right. It, you walked up the, to, the, to the buffet of our podcast and you chose croutons all right (laughs) it's a bit difficult to get through yeah you're eating croutons all right there's 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 a beautiful soup right over there right it's called Mm. any other episode than this and the second i'll say is don't leave us don't don't just don't just don't stop you know you don't turn around and walk away okay because you're a part of us and we're a part of you now so if you didn't know, something that we normally do is that we take the movie that we just watched and we twist the plot to see if we can make it better or, you know, more adorable or whatever. So we should, we should, we should, we should maybe real quick, just real quick. And I'm real thinking quick. maybe instead of fleshing it out, we can just do like a quick elevator pitch, right? Yeah. We are on it. the ground floor. Yeah. We're about to go to the first floor and I would love for, if it's all right, to just ask for a quick elevator pitch of how we could make this movie better. And then what we could do is we could walk out of the elevator, shake mm-hmm. it off, we'll mm-hmm. back into the elevator, and we'll go back down to the ground floor, and maybe we could do another pitch. So we'll do two pitches. What do you think? Sounds good. I love it. Let's let's do it. Oh, let's do it. So I'm pressing the elevator button now. Bing! Bing. <laughs> okay, it's the movie Gremlins, except it's not a movie, and it's a TV show, and there's no Gremlins in it. Okay? I know what you're thinking. What? But here's the thing. This is a TV show that specifically is about inventions. And it's actually like a like a, um, a reality show like uh, so you think you can dance or whatever. And mm-hmm. people come on and they pitch inventions to oh, who? Boy. Billy's dad from this movie. Oh, like Shark Tank slash Dragon's Den. Correct. Type I, thing. Exactly. And I lied. There is. One gremlin, and he's also one of the judges, and he's the <laughs> harshest one, right? It's Billy's dad, a gremlin, and like Vivica A. Fox or something. And they're what the, the gremlin they're the have to say about the milk tap. Disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get gremlins for it, Mogwai. Mmm, milk. That's what he would say. How about this? It's a story about a young woman living in America today, in the United States. Of Fantastic. America. Fantastic. <laughs> Is it Michelle Obama? Um, 
it's it inspired, by, it inspired, by, inspired by okay, yeah, inspired by inspired by Michelle Obama's who is it perhaps. who is it? Who we, is as we all are loosely based yeah, yeah. as a young woman living in uh, the United States of America right let's mm. say like th- it starts about like 30 40 years ago oh, okay. she the 90s is bullied a lot at school and she sees a lot of injustice around her her father works very hard yeah and she, you know, sees the toll that <laughs> the society that they live in takes upon her parents, who are both so hardworking and and want her to have the best life, but they're just not set up well. Right. Um, and this really inspires her to uh, pursue a traditionally male-dominated dom- um, career, which is politics. I was going to say, um, is it the president? She bec- What? Does she become the president? <sighs> no. <gasps> Vice president? Wait, wait. Secretary I'm of telling, State? I'm sorry, telling sorry, the story. Sorry, 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 sorry. Chief Justice of the, of the Supreme Court? She st- studies politics. She studies very hard at university. You know, the whole world is working against her um, right, in lots right. of ways. But she um, she overcomes all of these hardships. And she finally gets into a point where she's elected as a, I guess you'd be elected as like a, a, a state representative first. Is that right? In the House of Representatives. Yeah. yeah. Poli- American politics. You know about that, right? I and, know um, about that. She, she works and she works really hard and she wins loads of public support and she builds her career and builds her career and she eventually becomes, um, you know, a very senior pol- a p- p- person in politics and um then they say we want you to meet the president and we want you to speak to the president and um we think this is going to be really good for you and we think that this is going to be a really amazing step in your career and she's so pleased and excited because she's like finally this is the day i've been working towards i can finally make a difference i can finally do something with my life so the big day comes where she you know is is going to meet the president Right. She spends ages like, you know, choosing her outfit and, and getting her hair done. And, and she looks through her notes of all the things she's prepared to say. And um, Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm and, so excited for they, her. And they and she walks up to the door of these, these massive oak doors and they pull them apart. And there's the Oval Office and she she steps in and they're sitting behind the desk. Gremlin? Is a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> President is a gremlin. <laughs> the president is a gremlin. I will welcome to the White House. I want the White House. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What God. do you think? I love it's it. Called, and... It's called The Mogwai House. Uh, yeah. the, the Mog White House. The Mog White House. The yeah. Mog White House is what it's called. <laughs> Dude, and what and then she goes, she goes. Nice to meet you, Mr. President. And she like lights a flare and holds it up to the fire extinguisher. Yeah. And then it goes off and morphs into, you know, all these other ones. And they're like, hello, Mr. President. Hello, Mr. President. Hello, Mr. President. Hello, Mr. President. And then, um, and then, you know, chaos. Society ensues. falls. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll take all those ideas and we'll roll them up. And we'll stick them inside some Christmas crackers. Right, and we'll put them around the Christmas table when all of the family comes together, and we can pop and choose wisely. Sounds good. But before we do that, maybe we should rate this movie. I don't. I say that. Wait, it's Christmas. Anybody can do anything <laughs> they want. <laughs> well, then, on a scale of one to five glasses of just water. How many glasses do you give this film? I don't like like, like a three and a half. Yeah, nice. it's, pretty, it's pretty good. Never seen it before. Thought it was fun. Uh, like the Muppety quality of it, and you know, like uh, Gremlins in it. Yeah, three and a half. Yeah. Pretty good. I think I'm going to say three. Uh, similar reasons. I think I I I liked it a lot, but like. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. I don't fine. think this film would get made today, and part fifty percent of that is good, a good thing, and fifty percent of it is not a good thing. You know, like I don't yeah. think a film as silly as this would be made by Steven Spielberg, someone as like, you know, a famous director, like Steven Flippin Spielberg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, know. exactly. It's a special little thing from the eighties, I think. But look, it's it's Christmas. 
Yeah. So yeah. we really need to get going. We're going to go visit the North Pole right now. Did you know? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Great. And um, we're going to take our Christmas chair and our good vibes yeah. Um, and go and visit the guy who's there. The guy and who's there. um yeah, I I, I am gonna drive, so You always get to drive, Emma. Well I am the sheriff, asshole. <laughs> Maybe I can be the sheriff one day. Come on. Maybe. Maybe. We could both be the sheriff. We're oh, the joint sheriff of Co sheriffs of our own destiny, but not today. Not today. So folks, I'd like to leave you with this very special Christmas message <laughs> from us to you. Yeah. If your air conditioner goes on the fritz or if your washing machine blows up or your video recorder conks out before you call the repairman, turn on all the lights, check all the closets and the cupboards, look under the beds because you can never tell. There might be a gremlin in your house (laughs) and it might be right behind you right now, Anders. <laughs> oh, actually, it was just my cat. It's all fine. Everything's it's fine. fine. Don't worry. Cat. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's Christmas. Everything's fine. Anyway. Anyway. Thank you for listening to this festive episode of Plot Twisters. Leave us a festive review on Apple Podcasts if you have the time. We'll see you next time. Feliz Navidad, y'all. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Nice. <laughs> There's an episode in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs>